Greetings, friends in Christ. I'm Pastor Elizabeth from St. Paul United Church of Christ in beautiful Columbia, Illinois. Welcome to worship on the first Sunday after Epiphany, on which we also celebrate the baptism of Christ. We are glad you are here. There are a few announcements in the worship bulletin. We hope you will print or otherwise display the bulletin to help you follow along and participate in the service. There will be another drive through envelope pickup this coming Saturday, January 16th, from 10 a.m. until noon. If you would like to pick up your 2021 offering envelopes and have not yet done so, please come to the Bottom Avenue entrance of the church, where members of the Board of Mission and Stewardship will greet you and supply you with your envelopes. Mission and Stewardship will be collecting items for Kinder Cottage at the same time and the same place, so if you would like to bring food or supplies for Kinder Cottage, please do so. A list of needed items was sent in an email, so pick up, pick up and drop off, or drop off. It's your choice. All of it happens on Saturday, January 16th, from 10 a.m. until 12 noon at the Bottom Avenue entrance to the church building. We find ourselves in a world unlike any we've ever known. Physical distancing separates us, but the love of God and love for one another brings us together nonetheless. We are the body of Christ disciples of Jesus, the physical presence of the Savior in this world. In that sense, we are very much joined together. We help each other, and we help others. If you have a need, or if you know of a need, please let us know. You may call the church office and leave a message, which are checked regularly, for pastoral care concerns, or just to say hi. Let me know how you're doing. Please contact me by cell phone, text, or email. Numbers and email addresses for myself and the rest of church leadership are listed in the bulletin. Now with bells, light, and music, let us begin our worship.
Please rise and join me in the prayer for illumination and call to worship. Let us pray. Glorious God, when Jesus was baptized for your healing mission, the heavens opened in a flash of glory as vision and voice blazed upon the waters. May your spirit so burn in us that we hear your word translated into deed and follow Jesus in paths of justice, rightness, and peace. Amen. Children of the Holy One, let us praise the Creator of heaven and earth. Let us worship God. Please be seated. Please rise for the confession. Knowing we are infinitely loved, let us boldly confess our sins before God. Let us pray. Holy God, we are precious in your sight, yet we often forget that we are your beloved. We confess our love is fickle and inconstant. We follow selfish goals, and to deny our way of life harms others and hurts your world. We are sorry, and we want to change. Create in us a clean heart. Strengthen our resolve. Reconcile us one to another, and bless us with your peace, that we may be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name, amen. Children of the Almighty, we are in a brand new year, calendar-wise. Many changes have come, have gone, and will come. But this one thing never changes, never has, and it never will. God loves us. We can't explain it, but we can rejoice in it. And in this also we may rejoice, for through Christ Christ, your sins are forgiven. 
Amen. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Good morning. I hope everyone had a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. In the new year, we sometimes start covenants or resolutions, like starting to eat healthier, exercise more, reading the Bible 365 days. Did you make a resolution this year? I sent to all the Sunday school families a new faith formation tool. Taking Faith Home. It has daily Bible readings. It has a scripture verse for the week. It has a, uh, prayers and blessings, hymns, weekly milestones, a devotion, service, rituals, and traditions. This is just a faith tool. It's, some families will use everything. Some will only use one or two of the items. But I'm also letting the congregation know that they could be a part of this faith tool. If you're interested in receiving a weekly um, Taking Home Faith uh, email, please send me your email at christianed at stpaulcolumbia.org. For the month of January, we are having a Lego contest. Any size of blocks will do, small, medium, large, a mixture of all of them. Um, any ages may join in this fund, one to 99. First, you read your Bible, read your Bible story. Then, this week it's the Epiphany story. Then you let your imagination create. You use your blocks and other things in the household to help tell the story. Um, here we have some angels and shepherds and sheep someone made. And this one was a castle of Herod's. And this one was Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus' home with the three wise men coming to bear gifts and on visiting. So send us your pictures with captions or even videos retelling the story to Christian Ed at stpaulcolumbia.org. Prizes will be awarded, five prizes every category. So that's a total of 15 prizes every week. So a lot of chances for a lot of families to win a prize. So have fun with this. Um, next week's a story is Noah's Ark then Daniel and the lions, Jonah and the big fish. And then the last week is tell us your favorite story out of the Bible. Have fun with this, create, learn our faith stories, and especially learn how to retell our faith stories. Because that is really what, what as Christians we are called to do, is to retell our faith stories. So let us pray. Come, Lord Jesus, come into our world and into our lives that we may be overcome with joy and peace throughout this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. January's Mission Moment is a familiar favorite. On Saturday, January the 16th, we'll be collecting donations for Kinder Cottage. Stop by the back parking lot of the church to drop off your donations between 10 a.m. and noon. And if you haven't had a chance to pick up your 2021 offering envelopes, you can pick them up as well. Um, in addition to the normal non-perishable food items that Kinder Cottage usually looks for, Right now they are collecting uh, face masks all the way from uh, age two up to adult, latex vinyl gloves, shoe coverings, um, and socks with uh, rubber 
grips on the, the bottom, um, Clorox wipes, paper products, hand sanitizers, um, anything of that sort, hand soaps. Um, and as well, they will accept your monetary donations uh, as expenses have exceeded income in the uh, past months. So if uh, you have a chance, please stop by on Saturday the 16th. Uh, drop off your donations and pick up your envelopes. Thanks. A reading from the 43rd chapter of the book of Isaiah, beginning with the first verse. Please join me in listening for God's word. But now thus says the Lord, the one who created you, O Jacob, the one who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you. Because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, Give them up, and to the south, Do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away, and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. And from the Gospel as it was recorded for us by St. Luke, the third chapter, beginning with the fifteenth verse. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, 
whether he might be the Messiah. John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our world is always filled with speculation. It always has been and never much more so than right now. We wonder when the COVID-19 pandemic will ease and end, when we will get back to in-person worship and to all the other things we so long to engage in once again. We've just been through a long presidential campaign season with loads of speculation on all sides, both ends and in between. We look back, we look ahead, and we wonder what will happen. What will come? What will change? What won't change? You, the members and friends of St. Paul United Church of Christ, ask many of the same questions within the church during this interim season. There is plenty of speculation to go around these days, just as there is in every day and age. The crowds in our text this morning may not be dealing with a pandemic or with an intentional interim process, but they are similarly speculating about their own sets of issues, mostly for them political in nature. Straining under the weight of Roman occupation, the people of Israel scan the horizon, watching and praying for the coming Messiah, God's anointed king, the mighty leader who will free Israel from Rome's oppression and inaugurate a new age of national sovereignty, prosperity, and lasting peace. To many, John the Baptist looks like a very promising candidate. There is that image thing. The camel hair robe and the locust lunches may have to go. But John's commitment to God is fierce and uncompromising. He speaks with authority, preaching repentance and the certainty of God's coming judgment. John is zealous. And John is angry, righteously so, angry enough to speak out against Israel's sin and faithlessness, angry enough to take on King Herod and his adulterous marriage to his sister-in-law and niece, Herodias. John is perhaps angry enough to take on the entire Roman Empire. Watching John preach, eyes ablaze, the crowds think he's looking pretty Messiah-like. Might John be the one? Might John the Baptist be the long-awaited Messiah? Well, John quickly squashes such speculation. You think I'm impressive, he says? You ain't seen nothing. 
one who is more powerful than I is coming. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. I only baptize you with water. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he is going to clean up and save the wheat. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Further, John warns, if this is what is coming, we need to be prepared. We need to change our ways. We need to repent. Some listeners take it to heart. They run home to bring back parents and spouses, children and friends. Others line up along the Jordan to wait their turn to be baptized. One by one, they slip down the bank and splash into the water. One by one, they emerge from the water and slog back up the bank, riverbed mud sucking at their heels. Water drips from their hair, beard, and robes, reminding them of their confession of sin and the fresh start they promised before God. When they reach the shore of the Jordan River, some head home, others stay to pray. No one much notices the man kneeling by the edge of the river, head bent deep in prayer. His thick shoulders and calloused fingers say he earns his living with the sweat of his brow and the work of his hands. He's like many of the men present, an average Joe, one of the crowd. But then the heavens open, and the Spirit descends And a voice proclaims, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. Just that fast, everything changes. Luke doesn't tell us how many people hear the divine message. Those who do undoubtedly connect it with passages in the Old Testament Passages that say God's Messiah will be God's own Son, will be filled with the Holy Spirit and suffer in God's service, and will bring forth justice to the nations. In Jesus' baptism, those texts come to life, proclaiming to all who hear the message, this man is indeed the long-awaited Messiah. But there are some distinctions between what the world expects and who and what Jesus is. Jesus does not ascend Israel's political throne in military power like the people expect the Messiah to do. God does send Jesus to change the world, but he will do it by teaching, preaching, comforting, healing, and by serving the littlest, the poorest, and the weakest, those ignored by the rest of the world. Jesus inaugurates a new day and a whole new way of being. After Jesus, nothing is the same. In his baptism, God anoints Jesus with the Holy Spirit, equipping him for what he needs to do and how he needs to do it. His will be a life of service, suffering, and sacrifice that leads straight through the heartache of the cross. Far from being a fire and brimstone breathing, sword wielding lesson in force and forced domination, Jesus' life teaches us how to live in faith, so we too may know and share the depth of God's love. In Christ, we are offered God's gift of salvation. That gift is enacted and celebrated in the sacrament of baptism. But the baptism Christ calls us to 
is different from the baptism Jesus himself experienced. When John the Baptist helped people through their ritual dip in the Jordan, it was a baptism of repentance, an expression of the person's confession of sin and desire to turn his or her life around. It demonstrated the person's commitment to do better and be better. Our baptism expresses not what we have done, but what God does for us. It's so easy to take our baptism for granted, or to think it's not that big a deal. Baptism is a big deal. In baptism, God names us, claims us, and declares us eternally loved. In baptism, we become sons and daughters of our Creator, brothers and sisters of Christ Jesus. God's love weaves us into a new life and a new family of faith. That love does not insulate us from life's sufferings or hardships, but it does assure us that no matter what, God will be with us. God's love will carry us through. Everything about that is a big deal. Do not fear, says the Lord, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. For I am the Lord your God. You are precious in my sight and honored. And I love you. That is the blessing and the promise of baptism. That is the blessing and the promise of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. As we enter our time of prayer, 
I ask you to please keep us updated on those prayer requests you know of. You may call the church office and leave a message. The messages are checked regularly. You may call me directly on my cell phone if you would prefer. You may call Parish Nurse Joanne, and she will get the information to us. As always, we appreciate your help and your cooperation in this. Often we don't even know of those in need of prayer until they're not in need of prayer anymore. So please do help us get the word out. That's very much appreciated. The prayer requests for week one are The People and Leaders of the United States of America Dorothy Klein The Loved Ones of Red Lair The Loved Ones of Sylvia Mentel The Loved Ones of Joe Bassey Let us pray to the Lord, and as we do so, let us close each petition with my saying, Give strength, O Lord, and all of us saying, And bless us with peace. All glorious God, Maker of heaven and earth, hear us as we pray. Give strength, O God, and bless us with peace. We pray for the world you have made. Move again over these troubled waters, steeped in chemicals and stained with blood, where carelessness and violence bring chaos, restore order, goodness, and life. Give strength, O God, and bless us with peace. We pray for the church you have redeemed, Renew in us the gifts of your Spirit and the call to Christian discipleship. Where history and heresy have divided us, make us one in the baptism we share. Give strength, O Lord, and bless us with peace. We pray for the peoples you have created. Give to the leaders of all nations the wisdom to know what is good. Wherever there is strife, grant peace. Where there is a need to stand up for what is right, grant courage. Where there is a need for healing, heal and cure. Where people are poor and hungry, provide justice and daily bread. Give strength, O Lord, and bless us with peace. We pray for the loved ones you have given us. Bless our families, friends, and neighbors. Keep them safe from trouble and danger. Where there is sorrow, sickness, or suffering, send your spirit of comfort and healing. Give strength, O Lord, and bless us with peace. All this we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus, whose voice is our strength and salvation, whose breath is our spirit of peace, and in whose name we pray even as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Need never stops. In this day and age, Need is greater every day, in the community, in the world, even in the church. Even during times of virtual worship, there is the ongoing expense of ministries, buildings, and staff. 
need never ends. Your response to need is great as well. Thank you. You may continue to contribute by mail, electronically, through your financial institution's bill pay system, or however you have been making your donations. Regardless of how they come, your contributions and your work on behalf of Christ's Church are needed and are deeply and genuinely appreciated. Please rise for the prayer of dedication. Let us pray. Holy God, at his baptism you acknowledged Jesus as your beloved Son, and through him you opened to us a way to become your children by grace. Holy God, may these gifts we return to you be a sign of our dedication to live as your faithful daughters and sons, born in the waters of baptism by the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Now go out into this day in peace, hold fast to everything that's good, return no one evil for evil, but in all things take the high road, dig deep, find your strength and your courage to act like God's children, for that is indeed what we are, and Christ Jesus will be at your side every step of the way. And the blessings of Almighty God, Eternal Creator, Eternal Redeemer, Eternal Comforter and Guide, be and abide with you always. Amen. <laughs>